Hey everybody, this is Tech Guy Charlie. Welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to the pro or the manual camera modes on your Samsung Galaxy. And I'll be using the S23 Ultra to demonstrate. But since every Samsung phone comes with a pro mode, you can follow this guide and learn what happens when you change these values. All right, so let's begin. So you guys might have a question. What's the benefit of taking a photo in the pro mode when the auto mode does a pretty good job on its own? Well, let me explain. When it comes to taking interesting photos in challenging situations like this one, then the pro mode will help you take much better quality photos and videos. So take a look at this photo. It is beautiful. And here is a similar photo taken in the night mode. As you can see, there is a massive difference between the two, even though both were taken with the 10x telephoto lens with the exact same lighting and the phone mounted on a tripod. So this is where the pro mode is highly beneficial. And the same thing applies to videos. You know, I actually record all my YouTube videos with the vanilla S23 in the pro mode because the regular auto mode makes the videos look overexposed, washed out and the white balance is totally messed up. But we can fix all of that in the pro mode just by tweaking some settings. Now the video looks much better. So let me explain how the pro mode works on a Samsung Galaxy. Alright, so Samsung phones have two manual modes, Pro Video for videos and Pro for photos. The functionality is pretty much identical, both of them let you have full manual control over the camera. We will start with the Pro mode that is for photos. So this mode will give you full control over the camera's ISO level, shutter speed, exposure value, focus system and the white balance. So let's start with the ISO. So, in simple words, ISO shows you the sensitivity of the camera sensor to light in a numerical value. A higher number means high sensitivity to light. This means the camera will be able to capture bright images in the dark at higher ISO levels. However, keep in mind that high ISO is gonna introduce a bit of noise in your photos, as you can probably tell. The one on the left has been taken with ISO 1600 and the one on the right has been taken with ISO 64 and there is a massive difference between the two. So this is why you should use the ISO with the appropriate shutter speed. Which brings us to the second setting, that is the shutter speed. Now this represents how long the camera sensor is allowed to collect light as you press the shutter button. The shutter speed is shown in seconds and the slowest shutter speed that you can set on the S23 Ultra is 30 seconds and the fastest that you can set is 1 by 12,000th of a second. Now the way this works is really simple. The camera will capture less light at fast shutter speeds because the shutter is gonna quickly open and close. And the camera will capture more light when you slow the shutter speed down because then the shutter is gonna stay open for longer. And this is great for taking landscape photos in low light. But as a side effect, you'll have to deal with motion blur when you take photos with the slow shutter speeds as you can see in this photo. So how do you counter motion blur and capture nice and crisp photos in low light? Well, you can do that by speeding up the shutter speed and if the image becomes too dark, you can increase the ISO. So both shutter speed and ISO always go together. And if we take a picture now, it's gonna be nice and crisp. So there you go. It really depends on how much light and the amount of motion there is in the scene you are trying to capture. Also, if you use a tripod with the slow shutter speed, then you can capture some amazing creative photos like this one with the trailing lights. So this is a photo taken in the auto mode and this one with the long exposure setting. As you can see, we've got trailing lights. So the bottom line is, you want to use the combination of the ISO and the shutter speed depending on the scene to get that perfect shot you are looking for. And this is something that you will learn as you play around with the manual mode. And this is how I was able to capture the photo of the moon. I used a combination of low ISO for less noise and 8 seconds of exposure to allow the phone to capture sufficient light. And the end result was this photo. And yes, it takes a couple of tries to get the right photo, but it's totally worth it. 
All right, so moving on, the third setting is the exposure value and this will be disabled when you've got both the ISO and the shutter speed set to manual. So you'll need to set one of these to the auto mode to use the exposure value. So now that we've got the ISO set to auto, changing the exposure value will only change the ISO while keeping the shutter speed to a static value, which is great if you want to keep one of these to a static value and want the other one to be controlled with the exposure value. The other thing that you can do is set both the ISO and the shutter speed to auto and now the phone is going to adjust both the ISO and the shutter speed depending on the exposure value that you set. You know what? I think this is the same thing as tapping on an object in the photo mode that is the auto mode and then adjusting the brightness using this slider. But it's more advanced in the pro mode because then you can set a static value to the ISO or the shutter speed. Okay, so next we've got the focus control and inside you're gonna see three settings. When you set this to center, the phone is gonna focus on objects that are in the center of the screen. Then you've got the multi mode which sets the focus to a wide area which is great for landscapes. And finally you've got the complete manual focus. And the manual focus is very useful for taking photos in challenging situations where the autofocus is not able to do its job, just like in this photo. And using it is super easy. You will notice that as you adjust, the phone is going to apply a green highlight to the objects that are in focus. You can see it if you pay close attention. And this makes using manual focus super easy. And here's the result. As you can see, it's a nice, clear, sharp photo. So yeah, manual focus does have its advantages. So next, we've got the setting for the white balance, which is probably the most useful setting of all because this controls the color tone of your photos, which can be very useful in different lighting situations. For the most part, you want to leave this set to auto, but in case the phone is not able to output natural looking photos, you want to tweak the white balance until what you see on the display matches what you are seeing in real life. So the whites should be whites and not yellow or blue. And you'll also notice that as you adjust, the phone is going to show you a little icon which shows you what kind of lighting situation this white balance setting is suitable for. Like 2800 Kelvin is suitable for taking photos in a scene lit up by incandescent bulbs. 4000 Kelvin is for fluorescent lighting. 5500 is for taking photos in sunlight. And 6500 Kelvin is for taking photos in cloudy weather. So using this, you can manipulate the color tone of your photos. Now the best example that I can give you of the white balance is in the photo of the moon. Take a look. The blue sky in the picture of the moon is because I had the white balance set to 2800 Kelvin, which gives the photo that beautiful sky blue color. Meanwhile, the photo that was taken with the auto white balance gave the sky a boring gray color. So see the difference? Now, if you want to read more about white balance, I would suggest going to Photography Life because they have a fantastic article on white balance. Alright, so next we've got the metering mode. This helps the phone decide how to assign the right shutter speed and ISO based on the amount of light the camera picks up. And you've got three metering modes. The first one is center weighted metering. This is great for taking portraits and when your subject is in the center of the screen. The second one is matrix metering. This is good for taking photos of well lit landscapes. And the third one is spot metering. Now this is one of my favorites because this will help you take a photo of a subject when you've got lots of light in the background. So it is suitable for high contrast scenes like this one. So take a look. The greeting card is nice and bright even though we've got a lot of light in the background. And tapping on this circle will let you adjust the contrast, highlights, shadows, saturation and the tint of your photo which is very useful. And finally, tapping here will open the histogram and looking at this you can figure out if your image is over or underexposed. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail but in short, the dark tones are displayed on the left side of the histogram. The middle portion shows you the mid tones and the right side shows you the whites. 
Now, in very simple words, you want the graph to be covering the middle part because then you've got the correct exposure. If your shot is overexposed, you'll see the graph move to the right side and if it's underexposed, you will see the graph move to the left. And this is when the details are lost. So using this, you can figure out the correct exposure for your photo. So take a look, the exposure is perfect. You also get the histogram in the pro video and this is something that I actually use to figure out if the exposure is correct or not. Now, another advantage of taking photos in the pro mode is that you get the option to save your photos in both RAW and JPEG. So what you can do is head on into the settings and then tap on advanced picture options and set this to save as both RAW and JPEG. And now when you take a picture in the pro mode, the phone is going to save in both uncompressed RAW, which is in DNG format and also in regular JPEG for uploading on social media. And the best part is you can export your photos directly from the gallery into Adobe Lightroom. And one of the advantages of taking photos in uncompressed RAW is that you get a lot of flexibility when it comes to editing your photos. Now, I'm not a professional photographer, so I'm not going to pretend I know everything about Lightroom and RAW, but I will say that a little editing goes a long way. So check this out. We have gone from a crappy looking, unusable photo to something that is a little bit more presentable. And I've barely spent about 5 minutes tweaking the settings in Adobe Lightroom. So I think that covers the entire pro mode. Rest of the stuff is pretty standard like the self timer, resolution and I've already talked about the aspect ratios in another video. Oh and the manual mode is available on all 5 cameras of the S23 Ultra. That also includes the front facing camera. So check that out, you've got full manual control even on the front facing camera. That is awesome, right? So now let's move on to the pro video. So the pro video is the exact same thing as the pro mode but instead of clicking photos you are recording videos. And this is something that I use every day because I always record the videos that go on the YouTube channel in the pro video because it gives me complete control over the camera. And this is something that is absolutely required otherwise the videos turn out to be pale and overexposed. So you see the difference the pro video makes? So recording in pro video makes a lot of difference. And the controls are pretty much the same. You've got the ISO control, shutter speed, exposure value, focus control, white balance, microphone control, and the zoom. And I'm not going to explain everything again because it's pretty much the exact same thing. Like increasing the ISO will increase the camera's sensitivity to light. Shutter speed will increase or decrease the amount of light the sensor is allowed to capture. Then you've also got the exposure value which works the same way as it did in the pro mode. And the focus control is here as well. Now one thing you might have noticed is that the lowest shutter speed that we can set is 1 by 60th of a second. This is because the video's frame rate is already set to 60 fps. So theoretically the shutter is already opening and closing 60 times a second. So you cannot decrease the shutter speed beyond this unless you set the frame rate to 30 fps. And once again, higher the shutter speed, the darker your videos are gonna be. And sometimes this can be beneficial because I've noticed that in the auto mode, the phone tends to overexpose videos. So here's an example. The video looks okay but I can tell it's overexposed. And you also don't have any control over the phone's focus system. You can just tap on the object that you want to focus and the phone will do it for you. You don't have any control over the speed. But using the manual controls, you can record better quality videos. So take a look at this. I am using a higher shutter speed and that fixed the overexposed issue. And because this camera mode gives you full control over the focus system, you can change it yourself to give the video a slightly cinematic feel. So yes, if you know your way around the manual modes, then this is far superior to the auto mode because it gives you full control over the camera. And lastly, in the pro video, you also get the option to choose how the microphone captures the audio. So as you might know, the S23 Ultra has multiple microphones and using these options, you can take advantage of all of them. 
So if you select the rear microphone option, the phone will focus on sounds coming towards the back of the phone. So it's going to use the mic that is on the back and you can actually see it. It's underneath the camera lens. Then you've got the front microphone option, which will focus on capturing sounds coming towards the front of the phone. That is the side of the screen. And finally, you've got the omnidirectional option, which captures sound equally from all directions. And additionally, you also get the gain control. That would be the volume of the sound that is being recorded in the video. And there are more options here, like if you plug in a USB microphone like this one, you can choose the USB microphone option and record higher quality audio through this. And yes, it does actually make a difference. Okay, so this is the audio that is being captured through the phone's internal microphone. And this is the audio that is being captured through the USB microphone. As you can hear, there is a massive difference between the two. So there you go. Using a high quality external microphone is gonna help you improve the audio quality in your videos. And if you've got a Bluetooth headset connected to your phone, you can use its microphone to capture audio. So go to the Pro video and under the audio tab, select Bluetooth. Now the phone will capture audio coming from the microphone that is on the Bluetooth headset. Now if you select the BT mix option, then the phone will capture audio from two sources, its internal microphone and also the microphone that is on the Bluetooth headset. Very useful if you and your cameraman want to talk while recording a video. Now the other settings are pretty standard across the Pro and the Pro video, like you've got the histogram, video resolution and the aspect ratios. And just like the pro mode, you can also use the manual controls for the front facing camera in case you want to get creative. So you can have full control while recording videos on the front facing camera. And that is awesome. Alright guys, I think that covers both the pro and the pro video on the S23 Ultra. And yeah, I hope this video will help you take your photography to the next level. However, all said and done, I still recommend that you stick to the auto mode that is the photo mode and the night mode because the thing is, over the years, the auto mode has actually become really good and sometimes it will take photos better than the pro mode because of the scene optimizer and auto HDR. Like, take a look at this photo. It was taken with the auto mode and this one was taken with the manual mode. I feel that the auto mode is better because of HDR. However, in certain situations, the pro mode is gonna be far superior. So it really depends on the scene and you'll have to experiment and figure out what's best for you. Alright, so with that, we have come to the end of the video. If you have enjoyed watching, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your family and friends, and I will see you guys next week. This is Tech Guy Charlie, signing off.